our next step will be to bring in some NuGet packages that will be used throughout this tutorial. First, let's bring in this package called Bogus, which we will use to generate some fake data to see the, our database. We will also need two packages related to identity. One is Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity and Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity Anti-Framework Core. And we will need three packages for Anti-Framework. One is Microsoft Anti-Framework Core. Microsoft Anti-Framework Tools and Microsoft Anti-Framework Core SQL Server. So now let's see how we're going to create our login and register pages. And for this, we're going to use Razor pages. Microsoft doesn't recommend using Razor components, which are the building blocks for Blazor applications to handle identity tasks. It says that we should use Razor pages instead of Razor components for identity related UI, such as registration, login, logout. So we're gonna follow Microsoft's approach. We're only going to do the logout using a Razor component so you can see how you would be done. And let's try to understand why. Razor pages use the traditional HTTP request response cycle. As you can see in this diagram, the client sends a request and waits for the response. And that's an independent cycle where the connection is closed after each response. Blazor uses signal R to establish the communication between the browser and the server. And one of SignalR's underlying transport protocols is a WebSocket. This is not the only protocol that SignalR uses, but this diagram will help us understand the basic concept, which is that there is a persistent connection between client and server, which allows real-time updates, which is one of the biggest advantages of Blazor. Apps built with Blazor feel extremely fast, the problem with this approach is that it introduces security issues since it's not so easy to make sure that the client connecting to SignalR is properly authenticated. ASP.NET Core Identity can rely on cookies and bearer tokens for managing authentication and sessions. And those are designed for the traditional HTTP model. So we're gonna follow Microsoft's recommendation and use Razor Pages for the implementation of the login and the registry. But I think that that's an advantage since we're gonna have the opportunity to work with Razor Pages as well, even though this is a Blazor tutorial. So in our project, we're gonna create a new folder called Areas. This is a folder that's recognized automatically by ASP.NET as a special folder, and it's included in the application's routing and execution pipeline. You're gonna see the importance of Areas soon when we do the routing for our login and registry. Inside that folder, we're going to create our first area, which will be called Identity. And inside the Identity folder, we will create the Pages folder, which will represent different areas within the Identity. And this is a folder that's also picked up automatically by ASP.NET and added to the application's routing. And inside this folder, I'm creating the Accounts folder, which will be the name of our sub-area. Then we will add a Razor view. We do that by right-clicking on the folder and adding a scaffolded item. And we're choosing Razor view empty. And we're gonna call it identity layout, CS HTML. And as the name says, this is gonna be the layout for our identity area. And I'm bringing in some code that I have prepared before. And it's just your typical HTML template with the head and a body with a little bit of styling and with this render body method being called within the body. So this layout is the basic structure that will be fixed and in the place where the render body method is called is where we will show the content of each individual page. Then we're gonna add another empty razor view and that's gonna be the view imports. And that's where we're gonna put all the common using statements that are gonna be used across different files in this application. 
And we do this whenever we know that we're going to have repeating using statements and namespaces that will be present in different files. So that makes our code more organized, which is always a good thing. Then we have another empty razor view. And that will be the view start. And that will just define which file we're going to use as a layout. So all these files are created in the pages folder at the same level of the account folder. Then in the account folder, we're going to create a new Razor page, which we will call login. And we will create another one called register. And we can see here that two files actually get created. And we're going to see why very soon. But first, let's have a look at this login.cshtml file. We can see a couple of directives, the page, as we've seen before, and the model, which at the moment has quite a long name. And to avoid that, we're going to add everything that's in white to our view imports file. This way in the CSHTML file, all we need to do is to use the name of the model. And since we have that in the view imports, we can do the same in the register page. And I'm going to configure this app to redirect the user to the login page if they are not authenticated. So in the root of the project, I'm going to create a new folder, which will be called components. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a new Razor component. And I'm going to call it redirect to login. In this file, I'm going to inject this class called navigation manager. And that's a class that allows us to perform client side navigation in our app. And it does that without causing a full page reload. And components have a life cycle that defines various stages during the creation, rendering, and disposal. So we can use lifecycle methods to run code in different times in this lifecycle. One of these methods is the on after render, which of course runs after the component renders. And we use this method by overriding it and calling the base implementation, which allows ASP.NET to perform its own internal operations. And that's usually recommended in C Sharp. Then we're going to call the navigate to method in this navigation manager, passing the desired route. And if you remember the Razor Pages structure that we've created, we created the Areas folder and the Identity folder inside it, which means that the identity can be reached in the URL. So it picks up the identity as an area. And then inside this identity, we have the Pages folder, where we can create sub-areas. So I created the Account sub-area, which is picked up in the URL. And inside the Account sub-area, I finally created the page, which is the login. So the URL is the area, the sub area, and the page. And we can see that this method has as an optional parameter, the force load boolean, which forces a page reload. And usually we don't want to set that to true since it's not the greatest user experience, but we're setting it to true here to force a reload since we are just trying to render the login page. Then we're going to use this component in the main layout component, which means that every time the user is not authorized, they will be redirected to the login page. And I'm going to add a using statement to the imports file so we don't need to use the qualified name for the component. And in the identity layout, I'm going to add some text as well and try to run the app to see what happens. And I get the expected result. I get the text in the layout page and the text in the login page. Before we continue, let's clarify what these two files are when we create a Razor page. In the login page, for example, we have a CSHTML file 
in a CS HTML.cs file. The first we can say is the front end code. So anything that the user can see on the screen will be written in that file. The CS file is what we call the code behind. And that's where we handle the pages events, any processing of data and server side logic. And sometimes there is some conceptual confusion about what pattern Razor Pages belongs to. It's often thought that Razor Pages follow the MVVM pattern, but that's not the case. Here we don't have a view model. We could say that Razor Pages is a variation of MVC, but this can get quite controversial very quickly. And I'm not here to start these types of debate. What we need to know at this stage is that the code behind class needs to inherit from the page model class. So let's start working on our login page. I'm going to copy and paste some code that I had prepared before, but don't run away. Don't get scared. All of this code is just HTML with a lot of bootstrap classes. Bootstrap comes out of the box with Blazor. So I'm going to use it to style this app. But of course you can use other solutions like Tailwind or pure CSS. I haven't even written this code myself. I found a template that I liked and pasted it into this project. So the code that matters to us will be inside this card body div. So we're going to create a new form using the form tag. And we can see that this tag is in green, which means that it's recognized as Razor syntax which by the way, be careful not to confuse Razor Syntax with Razor Pages. Razor Syntax is a markup syntax used in Razor Pages, MVC, and Blazor. And it provides a way to mix server-side code with HTML. And Razor Pages is essentially a programming model for building web applications. I know sometimes Microsoft makes things very confusing when naming things. So it's good that we know exactly what we're talking about. So I'm giving this form an ID account and the method will be post, which means that this form will try to execute an HTTP post request. Inside the form, we're going to create a div where we'll show any validation errors. And that's the purpose of this ASP validation summary attribute. And we are setting it to model only, which means that you won't show the errors related to each property. Then we'll create a second div with the form floating class, which is a bootstrap class and a bit of style for the margin. And then we'll create an input tag, which will have an ASP4 attribute. And here we will link this input to a property of the code behind model. So we still haven't created that model. In the code behind file, let's create a new class which will serve as our model. So we're going to call it input model and it will have two properties, the email and the password. And we're going to add data annotations to these properties and they will also help with validation. It means that our form will always expect an email and a password, and we will expect the email and the password to have the appropriate shape that we configure. Then we need to connect this model with the front end, creating a property in this login model and using the bind property attribute. And back in the view, we can now associate the input with the properties using the ASP4 attribute. And we also add the form control class to this input in the autocomplete and required attributes. And to style this input with a floating label, we're going to put it under the input. And I added a bootstrap class incorrectly here. It should be class equals double quotes form label, but you can find it correctly in the GitHub repository if you are copying the code from there. And we also need the placeholder attribute, otherwise the floating label won't work. So let's see how our form looks so far. We can see our input with the floating label and using the browser's autocomplete capability. So we're going to duplicate this code for the password input and modify the code accordingly.
and we will also create a div for the button and it will be a submit button and it will have a few bootstrap classes as well So let's see again how our form looks. And we have a decent looking form with a button, but of course nothing works. Now, since this is a form that will send a post request, we need to create an on post async method as per the Razor Pages convention. This method will be automatically called when a form in this model is submitted and we wanna make it asynchronous. So for that, we need to return a task and it's my preference to always return an action result because it provides a range of possible return types. So it's an interface that gives us a lot of flexibility. And right now we're returning the page itself, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we will change that soon. But if we run the app and submit the form, we can hover over the input and see that our properties were correctly populated, which means that the data binding is working. But now we're going to create the register form and it's going to be pretty much identical to the login form. And I'm just putting them in two files because usually the register form will be different from the login form. So at the moment in the register form, we don't have any data binding. So we need to provide that. So we're gonna add that same bind property with an input property to the register model. And of course we need to change the content of the button to register. And since people will be initially redirected to the login page, we need to add a way for them to reach the register page if they don't have an account. So I'm adding another div and it will have some text asking the user if they have an account and if they don't, we will provide a link for them to reach the register form. And we can simply create an A tag that references the URL for the register form. And we're gonna do something similar for the register form. We will have a link to the login form in case they accidentally click on the register link and they already have an account, they need to have a way to go back. So let's see if it works and we can easily navigate from the login to the register form and vice versa. So that's it. In the next lesson, we're gonna bring Entity Framework into the picture to help us create our database and register and login our users.